Howdy. Come on over, have a sit, and let's you and me have a little powwow about Spotify. Fact numero uno, a lot of people hate Spotify. Fact numero dos, a lot of really high profile artists hate Spotify. Fact numero tres, a lot of unknown artists that nobody listens to really, really hate Spotify. The general argument, naturally, is over money. And today we're going to look at the current state of things and try and find an objective, reasonable answer to this question. Should Spotify be paying artists more? And does the fact that they are not yet a profitable business matter? In other words, is all of the Spotify hate justified? AKA, should you hate Spotify? So quickly, if you're not familiar with me or this channel, here's why you should listen to me on this particular topic. I hate being that assertively confident about anything, but I have a long history here. This is my grind. Come on. So I started releasing music on record labels in the late 1990s, and I would say that I was a professional musician, as in that was my day job starting in the early 2000s. And it was rough. At certain periods, I would say that I was effectively homeless. I would just stay on tour for a really long time and crash on people's couches, or if I got paid enough in a show, I would stay in a cheap motel, and then I would save up as much money as I possibly could, which wasn't that much, to buy some gear, and then I would work on another album in a tiny bedroom studio in my mother's duplex. But I kept grinding and eventually I started getting paid enough for my shows to where I could afford to be a roommate and afford all of my own bills and I guess live a lower middle class life. However, the amount of money I was making from CDs and vinyl and digital downloads was absolutely abysmal. But it wasn't abysmal because nobody was listening to my music, quite the contrary. It was abysmal because if you paid $18 for a CD, the music store would keep $11. The distributor would keep $4 and my label would keep $2. Minus their expenses of manufacturing, I'd get something like, I don't know, literally pocket change. But at this point, iTunes was already starting to eclipse physical sales. So you'd buy an album for $10. iTunes would take their three bucks. A digital distributor would take $3.50. My label would take $1.75 and then subtract promotional expenses from my cut. I actually don't think I ever got paid for my iTunes sales through a record label. And before you say that I had a bad deal, I had a 50-50 deal, which was about as good as any independent musician was going to get from a record label at the time. So in 2007, like most record labels, mine folded. And at that point, the vast majority of my income was actually coming from television and ad composing, and I was doing pretty well. So I was able to buy back all of my licenses so I would be the only person making money off of my own intellectual property or my music. But oddly, my music sat on iTunes generating money for over a year with no connection to me at all. And I tried contacting Apple every possible way that I could, but they didn't bother responding until after I sued them to take the music down so I could re-upload it as the primary account holder. This was all so ridiculous that I threw my hands in the air and just uploaded my music to piracy sites with a little HTML file that had a PayPal link so people could tip me. And believe it or not, I made way more money from that than I did from iTunes the following year. That's how botched this system was. The clouds parted for me quite a bit when Spotify came to America. I initially didn't expect that much. I uploaded my music there through TuneCore, but after a while, $200 a month, then $500 a month, then $1,000 a month, then $2,000 a month. And before I knew it, I was making a decent, comfortable, middle-class living wage without having to worry about writing music for advertisements, without having to worry about extensive touring, without having to worry about corporate sponsorships. It was just this beautiful balance of me creating and my fan base consuming, and everything worked out beautifully. And to be honest, that's all I ever wanted since I was a 10-year-old playing the guitar in my bedroom. But not everybody accepted Spotify with open arms like I did. In fact, some people were really pissed off about it. One notable example would be Taylor Swift. While this was going on, she called streaming an unfair experiment and pulled her entire catalog off of Spotify. Of course, this long saga ended with her doing ads for Apple Music, which is the exact same business model with some antitrust violations sprinkled on top. In my opinion, the reason she was so upset is because the pop music economy depends on short-lived trends to generate a lot of money through album sales, and the pop music economy is dying. Well, from her hate em, pop stars are phenomenons, and Taylor enjoyed the amenity of a dump truck pulling up in her driveway and dropping off $10 million every time she had an idea that somebody could produce for her. I actually have no problem whatsoever 
whatsoever with Taylor Swift. She stands her ground and she gets her money. And that's what that spat with streaming services was about, money. It wasn't about the future of music or my rights. Now on the other end of the spectrum, I don't want to be the one to tell you this, but if nobody's listened to or purchased your music outside of Spotify, it's utterly ridiculous to expect Spotify to pay you for your music. A lot of people on social media don't seem to understand this, so let me rephrase it. If nobody is currently listening to your music, it is not Spotify's fault that you are not making a living as a musician. Unless you're extremely lucky, making a living as a musician is extremely difficult and it's a labor of love. Another devil's advocate that is in Spotify's corner that I need to address. A lot of popular artists are on record labels and or digital distributors. Now, if you and a record label have a good relationship and if they are adeptly promoting you, who am I to say that you shouldn't have that relationship? You should do whatever works best for you. However, if you are having some streaming income problems, you should definitely look in the direction of the middleman who is pocketing your streaming income before going up the ladder all the way to Spotify. Spotify could pay you a whole lot better, but even with Spotify not paying you that well, 50 to 70% of that could mean the difference between you spending your days writing music or driving an Uber. I have a lot of peers and friends who are professional musicians who are not happy with Spotify at all. And the one example that I want to use is Josh Eustace from Telephone Tel Aviv. Telephone Tel Aviv originally was Josh Eustace and the late Charlie Cooper, and I became very close friends with them in the early 2000s. And to be honest, I was pretty jealous of them. So back 16 or 17 years ago, Telephone Tel Aviv was on a great label in Chicago called Hefty Records that supported them monetarily and with promotion. Now their music sold itself very well. It's brilliant music. However, the PR leg work did help. While Josh was starting to get his deserved and hard earned fanfare, my path wasn't paying off so well. And I felt like I just couldn't get things right with the music industry at all. Fast forward 16 years or so and my manic grinding has resulted in me having 20 albums on Spotify. Telephone Tel Aviv has four. Now a truly ignorant and short-sighted way of looking at this would be to say that I worked hard and that Josh didn't. Josh works just as hard as I do. And if you go to Telephone Tel Aviv on Spotify or Bandcamp, which you absolutely should, I'll link to it below, you'll see that their contribution to music is pretty damn significant. Unfortunately, Daniel X, Spotify's CEO, doesn't share the same viewpoint. In fact, he has plainly stated that releasing an album once every three or four years isn't going to be enough. He's actually not wrong, but I have a major problem with him saying it because he is the one who brought this business model into music, not the other way around. Spotify's membership fees are less valuable without Telephone Tel Aviv's music on it. If I want to listen to some Telephone Tel Aviv and all of a sudden it's not on Spotify, guess what? I open up a different app like Bandcamp and get it there. My point is, is that while Josh and I make music that fits into the same little genre and while we share a whole bunch of fans, his process of making music is different than mine. One is not better than the other and it's completely unintentional, but the old system benefited him very well and the new system doesn't benefit him very well. In fact, it's hurting him. Does it benefit me? Well, let's do the math. Between July of 2019 and July of 2020, I got just under 7 million streams on Spotify, for which I was paid 0.003 cents each. My monthly mortgage payment is 483,000 Spotify streams. A new Xbox game is 20,000 Spotify streams. In 2017, I released an album called Piety of Ashes that cost me 37 million Spotify streams to make. Streaming makes up a whopping 65% of my overall all income for my released music. And I should mention that the 15% you see on the end there for CD sales and supplemental income from merch like shirts and stuff, that's gone now. Unfortunately, this year, the one-two punch of the pandemic and the postal service meltdown killed my label and fulfillment business. So with streaming now being the vast majority of my album income, Spotify is 71% of that, far more than every other service combined. And I'm on virtually every service. The problem here is that when I compare what all of the services pay me per stream, Spotify is on the far low end of that spectrum. And by the way, before you praise Tidal for paying me so well, they literally only reported and paid out one month out of 12. Like, my music is still there getting played, but they're just not reporting for some reason. I suspect that reason might be because they're broke, because I'm definitely not the only artist experiencing this phenomenon. But hang on, there's something really important to note here, because if you go back to 2015, Spotify would have been crushing every single service that you saw on that chart by paying me 0.008 cents per stream. 
that had put me into the middle class doing nothing but writing and releasing albums. And if I were still getting that much money now, I would be writing and releasing more albums for Spotify. Unfortunately, with the pandemic and everything, touring and physical sales are now off the table for me. So I'm doing everything from YouTubing to scientific research gigs to video game composing gigs. And if I'm to be totally candid and honest, I'm working myself to the point where it's affecting my health. So Daniel, or Mr. Eck, as somebody with over 20 albums on your network, an average of 160,000 individual listeners per month, over 7 million streams per year. How the f am I supposed to crank out my output to what you deem enough to make a living when you've decreased my pay by over 60% in the last five years? Five years ago, I was a Spotify white knight and I defended them every chance I get. Right now, you can probably find interviews or articles where I'm talking about this pipe dream I had about socialized copyright, where everybody gets access to all intellectual property and it's paid for by an internet tax. This is obviously a much bigger conversation, but my passion for this exists because I don't believe that information should be sold as if it were a tangible or expendable resource. For example, if you pirate my $10 album, that does not equate to me losing $10. Much more importantly, if a child watches or reads education educational content without paying for it, the conglomerate or university that owns that information does not lose the equivalent in membership fees. Information is good for everyone. Spotify kind of emerged as a privatized version of this, and while the entire music industry was scrambling to deal with piracy, Spotify just made music so affordable and easy to consume that piracy seemed like a chore in comparison. I'm also a huge fan of it pushing music away from one-hit wonders and rewarding music that survives the test of time. When an album only generated money from one single transaction, that incentivized major labels to put out a lot of crap and just promote the heck out of it, and artists like myself just weren't invited to that party. Finally, music streaming breaks the tradition of an album length having to fit within a physical format, such as 76 or 80 minutes. You can just have an album be as long or as short as you want with this new normal, and hopefully, in my lifetime, albums will stop being steadfast, permanent things and be more like ever-changing life forms. But over the last few years, my enthusiasm, much like my income from streaming, is waning. Spotify has yet to be a profitable company, and that's not because they can't be a profitable company, it's because they put growth before profit. And I get it, that's something they needed to do, but when is it gonna be time to transform into a regular business with checks and balances? I would personally argue that that transformation should have happened before they gave $100 million to Joe Rogan for exclusive rights to his podcast. Not because I dislike Joe Rogan or because I think his podcast wasn't worth that much money, but because the business model that I initially became involved with was not a media conglomerate that bought shows. When growth rides off into the sunset on some different path and the musicians are paying for it, that's when I stop believing that I'll be invited to sit at the table to have a piece of the pie once this business model levels out. So with all of this in mind, should we hate Spotify? Come on. When I initially had the idea to make this video, I thought that it would have come out a lot more defensive of Spotify, but after reaching out to a half dozen artists and extensively crunching numbers, I have a far more critical perspective than I initially expected to have. Obviously, right now, I am in a far better place than I was 15 years ago in the older music industry model, but I'm not so sure anymore that if the reason for that is because the model changed. It's possible that I just have a more diverse group of listeners now, and there's no real way to know for sure. I've been a professional musician for nearly 20 years, and at the beginning of my journey, if you told me that 160,000 individual humans would be listening to my music every single month, I would have never believed you, and just trying to wrap my head around that actually makes me tear up a bit. I wanna ask you a question, if you don't mind, and there is no wrong answer, it's entirely subjective. With all things considered in this video thus far, between July of 2019 and July of 2020, my 20 albums on Spotify generated 7 million streams. How much do you think Spotify paid me for this, and how much do you think they should have paid me for this? Well, Spotify for this paid me $25,441, and I looked up jobs that have similar annual salaries, and the closest match I could find was a parking lot attendant. 
And that's a job usually reserved for machines. Now, the takeaway from this should not be that I view myself as superior to a parking lot attendant. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being a parking lot attendant. But if I were a parking lot attendant, I would have time to play Microsoft Flight Simulator, which came out in like August and I haven't even been able to play it yet. Much more importantly, I would have more time to spend with my family who I feel like I neglect. And I would have time to sleep for more than four or five hours a night. I would love for Daniel Eck or any of the investors in a major streaming service to explain to me why I shouldn't be a parking lot attendant, because I could probably go get that job right now. The answer to that question is because every fiber in my being is a musician, and I am deeply passionate about it, and I will always be that. And like always, since the inception of recorded music, a bigger industry full of people who aren't musicians are taking advantage of that passion. The reason you don't have more artists like myself coming forward and disclosing the amount of money they make on a streaming service like Spotify is because it's basically an open invitation for criticism from everybody who's not making anywhere near that much money. And that's kind of my point. In the vast sea of independent musicians, I kind of came into the streaming Spotify world very well equipped with a very big back catalog of music that could generate me more income than, for example, Josh from Telephone Tel Aviv. So on one hand, while I've been grinding away at this passion for over two decades, I understand that this amount of money coming from Spotify is a massive privilege and it's actually kind of difficult to complain about it. But on the other hand, even with me being one of the best case scenarios for independent musicians, you take that $25,000 with no benefits in America where you have to pay for health insurance and all these other things, and you tax it with a 1099. This isn't a salary. This is just freelancer income. And the music itself that is solely generating aforementioned income from Spotify has its own budget. For example, one of my top performing songs of all time on Spotify has an entire symphony orchestra in it. That is really expensive to make. So even sitting in this incredibly privileged position that I recognize that I'm in, I still have to make this choice. Do I all of a sudden restrict the boundaries and the deadlines of an album to fit this budget that this new industry has given me and therefore making flashbulb albums have more quantity over quality? Or do I work four times as hard on a bunch of side gigs to make albums like I did five years ago? Right now I'm choosing the latter. So that's a real bummer, ain't it? But the reason I'm sharing this with you is not for your pity. I would much rather you think of me as a house that is standing but has some roof damage and some leaking going on, but it's inside a neighborhood of homes that have been utterly leveled by a tornado. All of this is especially important to know at a time when professional musicians can't make income from touring or performing. And it's not just Spotify, it's Apple Music, it's Tidal, it's Google Play or YouTube Music. They're all the same business model. And it's not the music industry, it's the tech industry. The vast majority of independent musicians that you listen to on Spotify are in some way or another dealing with the exact same problems that Josh and I are dealing with. And I have ways of making it work to pay my bills, but it results in me making fewer albums. If I make fewer albums, that's fewer streams that happen on Spotify. In the bigger picture, fewer Spotify streams will eventually lead to fewer Spotify members. That's the opposite of growth, that's decay. And it's easy to see why the tech industry is unable to forecast this from their perspective. But it is happening, and eventually the entire system will collapse and reinvent itself as it always does. Josh and myself will still be musicians, whether we make a living from it or not. The same cannot be said for tech CEOs or tech investors. What do you think? Do you hate Spotify? What do you realistically think could change to make things better? While keeping in mind that businesses need the incentive of profit and investors to stay afloat. I was going to wait till next week to tell you this, but what a perfect video to let you know that on October 26th, I will be partnering with Groupies and Adler Planetarium for a limited time thing where you can pay what you want 
for my entire catalog of 44 albums in this giant bundle, and you can help an amazing science organization at the same time. In the meantime, or if you're watching this in the distant future, if you want to support this channel, you can with the Bandcamp links down below. I'll probably have a Patreon at some point. You should definitely follow me on social media and see what I'm up to day to day. As always, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. Goodbye.